praise him, get it right, to do whatever is necessary to make sure he's pleased with our life. We're getting ready to go into our Sunday school. We're giving on to God, the pastor, all the saints of God, all those that are on the line, all those that are to come. We bless the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, we just want to be a sanctuary for him. Praise God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Oh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You ran holy, tried and true. Oh, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, oh, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, the throne of grace father god in the name of jesus lord we thank you we thank you for being so good to us we thank you for being our lord and our savior we thank you hallelujah for giving us another opportunity we don't want to take it for granted, God. Hallelujah. We want the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be accepted in your sight. Hallelujah. Because you are our strength and you are our redeemer. God, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for being able to come into the sanctuary. Hallelujah. As we be a sanctuary for you. Thank you for allowing us to have a physical sanctuary to come in, to enter the gates with thanksgiving and to enter the courts with praise. Oh, God, we are grateful for what you have provided and what you have done. Oh, God, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for what you've done in order to bring us eternal life. Lord, we thank you for giving us the mind to receive your precious Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. For that, that, that power that you have given us to stand. The power that you have given us to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we go forth, God, refresh us, revive us. Stir up the gift that you have placed in each and every one of us. Oh, God, as we move forward in this day, Lord, continue to be with us. Anoint your leaders, anoint your speakers, God. Let everyone that entered the building, hallelujah, be convicted. Hallelujah. Let everyone that entered the building get a new lease on what it means to serve you. Let everyone that entered the building get a spirit of committed, not just involved. Let everyone that entered the building see you 
Hallelujah. See you and hear you. Hallelujah. And then the ones that don't have you. Hallelujah. Give them a mind to say, what must I do? Hallelujah. Give them a mind to follow through, God. Hallelujah. Right now, we ask you to come for the breathe families in the name of Jesus. Heal those that, that are sick and afflicted. Hallelujah. The ones that are not able to come out, God, let them know that you still love them. The ones that are in the hospital, God. Hallelujah. Touch the bodies, God, because you are the healer in the name of Jesus. Give strength in the name of Jesus. Give strength to all caregivers, God, in the name name of Jesus, because they're caring for your people. Give them strength. Give them a mind to, to do it right. As servants, hallelujah, give them a mind of servitude. Hallelujah. And let it be for your glory and your honor. God, we love you, and we say thank you for everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our morning scripture is coming out of Jude. And everyone knows one of my favorites. Jude 24. Hallelujah. It say now. Mm. Right now. Right now. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Oh, God, to you, God, hallelujah, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Oh, God, both now. Hallelujah. We already said now unto you. Hallelujah. But be hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and majesty. Dominion and power. Hallelujah. Both. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. And forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Hey, God, hallelujah. I'm getting ready to give it to the hands of the teacher. But right now, we give you glory. We give you honor. Now and forever. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. 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 Later will take care of itself. When I get home, that'll take care of itself. But now, God, hallelujah. Now, now to you that is able though to keep, to keep now, 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 to him. glory that is able to keep you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, that's shot. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We like to enter his gates with thanksgiving in his courts with praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because it's right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, right now, right now. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Keep you through our hurt. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from falling.
now I want to hear that is able to keep you. Now I want to hear that is able to keep you. From falling. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. 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 If you think it's difficult, whatever you think is hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he's able. Hallelujah. It's just like the three Hebrew boys that say, if he don't, he's still able. He still can. Hallelujah. So we got to live with that mindset that he's able. Hallelujah. 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 And our teacher is coming. Glory to God. Glory to God to let you know how able he is. Hallelujah, because we're going to be standing tall. Hallelujah, on his knees. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because he's able. Hallelujah, we're on our knees because we know he's able. He's able to help us stand tall. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in what we believe. Glory to God. Stand tall in faith. Hallelujah, because he's able to present us faultless before the presence of of his glory, hallelujah, with exceeding joy. Glory to God, hallelujah. He's able, hallelujah. We talk about the keeping power, but he's able to present you sinless. Hallelujah, that's the keeping power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, right now we turn the service into the hands Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Lady P, you could have kept on going. See, see, we not script here. Not here. We say let the Lord have his way. Glory to God. Hey, my shot. That's the old song we sung when we were, I don't know how young. Brother Troy just keep on taking us down memory lane. And then we go where we went out of the four time. Ah, I'm, I'm saying that word because it's in the it's in the the, the uh, lesson. The lesson says as a four time. Ah, right, we well, you'll see it, you'll see it, you'll see it. If I don't follow this lesson word for word, those that are on Zoom, you have it in front of you. But I want to first give on to God, to the pastor, a man, to elect Lady Perkins, to all that's in the house, all the saints of God, those that are. On Facebook, to the Sony, I think I saw you, praise the Lord. And to all those that will come on later, you know, that's a good thing. That's a twofold thing when you're dealing with Zoom and Facebook. It's, it's good in one way because you can come on later. You can eat it and chew it again. Or you can visit churches that you, you know, your sister churches all through the day. So that's a good thing about it. The bad thing about it is some people just get downright lazy and don't get up and go to the house of the Lord where the Lord said to assemble yourself, to forget not, not to do that. So it's twofold. So we thank the Lord for the positive part of that. Amen? Amen. So the, our lesson is, um, lesson today is January 21st, 2024, and our lesson is 2.3. The title of it is Standing Tall on His Knees. Now, how are you standing while you're on your knees? But you're standing. Amen? Because standing has various meanings. Okay? We stand. We stand. We stand. After all you've done to do to stand, stand. Therefore, in the liberty where which Christ has set you free, stand. Standing still and still standing. I said, I said standing still and still standing. How about standing, uh, standing and standing still? Still standing and standing still. Put it how you need it for your life. Why am I saying that? Because we're not going to just study the word we want to apply. Amen? 
So if you don't hear me read word for word, that's because we studied already. Now we ready to apply. Amen. You can study, but you need to also apply. Uh, our focus verse is coming from Daniel 6 and 10. Now. Now. I don't know why they started out with a time factor, but a, but now tells you current. Now says present. Now is currently happening. Now, Daniel. Now also mean now. Uh, now you better listen here, right here. Now can also mean behold. I want your attention. Now mean I, I'm not playing with you. Now you better he, well, listen here now. Now can mean whatever you need it to mean. Like I mean business. Now when you hear now, somebody not playing. We just heard the song now unto him. Haven't sung that song over 20 years. But when you hear it now, see, when we sung it at first when we were young, we sung it because Melly Kelly, Kelly shout out to Melly Kelly, our choir director, she taught us. And, and, and now, when we sing it, Woo! hallelujah, it's not about did I get my key, Melody, because now I'm knowing, hallelujah, when we first learned the song, we didn't know him, amen, but now, been through something, now I can sing with understanding, now unto him that is able. Now, you know, even when I first got saved, that was nice too. But now, see, there's been a change because I've been through. Now, because he's been keeping me and bringing me through. I said this then, and that was good. But now, I was telling somebody uh, the other day, I felt so good in my soul. I said, bet nobody mess with me today. <laughs> I know that was some bad English, but the person who I was talking to, they knew she ain't playing now. Bet nobody mess with me today. That's how I felt because I felt the Holy Ghost standing up in me. I wasn't talking about a person. I was talking about them spirits that roam through the earth trying to set you back. Same spirits that's in here. See, what was then is now. In Ecclesiastes, uh, 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 I believe Solomon told us that everything that was is. So then, now, this is just in a different form or coming at it from a different angle, but it's no new news. Nothing is wrapped up. I mean, I mean, nothing is different. The enemy still comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He still comes to appeal to the, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. No new news. So why are we trying to look for another? John himself baptized Jesus. And when he was in a situation, now he with the Holy Ghost. Daniel didn't have the Holy Ghost here. But John with the Holy Ghost. That tells us the best of the best can need encouragement. John in prison with the Holy Ghost sent some of his disciples to Jesus to say, are you the one or should we look for another? He's the one that said, now behold the Lamb of God. But he was in a situation. Uh-huh. And, and, and the Lord didn't even dignify the answer with, yes, I'm the one. He said, uh, go tell him the blind is being made to see. The lame is being made to walk. Why? The evidence will answer your question. Because you told them, behold the lamb. Now, you behold the lamb. Even though you're in prison, you can still behold the lamb. You told them to behold the lamb, John. Now in your mind, reach back, pull it on out. Think of what's going on. Look at his works. And now in your heart, behold the lamb. So your question is answered. He is the one. I just feel good in my spirit on the word now. Hallelujah. And like I said before, the focus verse is called focus for a reason. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. He knew, y'all. And his windows being open, currently being, 
in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Gotcha. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave the and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. Can we say a four time? A four time. I, that, I'm coming from a place when I say a four time. Because sometimes we think uh, that uh, things are like it is and we got to just deal and settle for. But the same God that was then is the same God now. Now, so we can praise God as a four time. I remember this house in its first glory. Hallelujah. And my praise has not diminished because he's been good then and he's good now. So I'm going to praise him as of all time. Glory to God. Somebody came by and visited our church. They say, y'all praise God like y'all got a church full of folks. Why? Because we got the same Holy Ghost that we received and still operating as of all time. So we don't need a house full to praise God. As a four time, because he didn't change. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. So why would Daniel's prayer life change? Because somebody wrote something. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. When he knew what was signed. Hallelujah. It's, re it's making me think I'm just going to go to another place when I, when I um, read that one part, what, the writing. I remember Pastor P preaching a message at the CAF about the handwriting on the wall. Pastor, you thought I didn't remember that, uh-huh. Handwriting on the wall. People read it. People, let me say, they saw the handwriting on the wall, but who can read it? Now let's go another step. Who can understand it? Now let's go an even higher step. Who can interpret it? It's not enough to know that the hand wrote on the wall. It's not enough to know the signs are before our face. But who understands? Who can interpret? See, the sons of Issachar understood the times. Sometimes you got to call them to come and interpret this that's going on before our face. All the sons of Jacob had names and they had a reason for their name. And the sons of Is Issachar understood the times. We don't hear much about Issachar, but Issachar is important. Every one of those sons have a meaning and they're important. However, Daniel was a wise man. He was considered one of the wise men. And in the Bible days, they deemed the wise man as those who can read the stars, show writings, and interpret. They call those wise men. Some people today may call them soothsayers and different things. And they come under different categories because the devil is such a copycat. When God has something, he gets his and try to copy and mimic. So if God has prophets, devil has his. Okay? You, you heard of evil prophets. You heard of, of prophets that were not sent by God. There's always copycats. Okay, even when people smash and cry and, and snatch and sm smash and snatch and this and that, you hear things in the news, you hear copycats. So that's why you get the evil soothsayers, you get the evil wise men, the wisdom of the world, and then you got the wisdom of God. So they are still smart, but they're in their own way smart. Familiar spirits is what they call it. But we're talking about one with an excellent spirit who had the wisdom of God who understood things others didn't understand and so the gift of God will set you apart anyway which brings us to our teaching outline we talk uh, in the first section it talks about Daniel's success why was he successful because a he had an excellent spirit b God's favor and see, he was faithful. He had faithful obedience, which brought him blessings. Okay? Daniel's persecution, he goes along with the package. 
the, uh, the uh, decree of Darius was A. That's the second uh, section uh, is Daniel's persecution. Under that section, you have Darius' decree. Dar Daniel's response, you have faithful obedience bringing worldly resistance. Okay? Section three, you have Daniel's deliverance. You have Darius' love for Daniel. You have B, uh, God's miraculous intervention and aftermath. And you have C, I will trust. I'm sorry, yes. I will trust God to deliver me from my trials. There's a question in each section. First question under Daniel's success, how can you demonstrate an excellent spirit in your daily life? That's a question that, that can happen every morning. How can I demonstrate an excellent spirit today? Now, I know what I did yesterday, but yesterday's gone and tomorrow may never be mine. So what can I do today now to bring to light, to demonstrate, to let it be seen by someone that an excellent spirit is in me, which is the spirit of God. In the second section, it says, how could faithfulness lead to persecution or other problems? That's another question. We know, we walk this. Faithfulness does lead to persecution or other problems. It, you don't have to do anything wrong for someone to mistreat you or just don't like you. David said, I was hated without a cause. Why? He was loved. He had God's favor. He had the anointing. While one king yet sat on the throne and was rejected, another one was coming on. He was hated without a cause. He was hated because the, the verse of the song changed. Oh, Saul killed thousands. David killed 10,000. Ooh, new addition to the song. So therefore now David is hated. You don't have to do anything to be hated or lied upon. But guess what? The, 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 the faithfulness, the favor of God can lead to persecution or other problems automatically because you are set aside. When the Lord sanctify you, set you aside, if he ever raised you above your brethren, you can ask Joseph, raised above his brethren, had a gift from the father, caused division among the brethren. It wasn't his fault. But the point is, when favor is set upon you, you should expect somebody to not like you. You should expect, if let's say everybody does like you, still expect a problem because the enemy peaks. He don't know everything. He's not omniscient, neither is he omnipresent. But he can peek ahead of you and see the purpose, see the calling, and try to block you from getting to that. You can look and see that in the birth of Jesus with Mary, Herod already on the throne, king, but he had an issue with a baby being born. It didn't even have a crib. However, there was something written about that child. He was a believer. Herod not liking him, but still believed. Therefore, he felt the threat of the baby. So therefore, that favor right there, that purpose right there caused some problems. Mary herself had to go through some things because of the favor of God. She was highly favored. See, people, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Get ready for some issues because the devil heard the favor of God is upon you. It goes with the package. Don't expect everybody to like you because you are favored by God. In fact, expect the opposition because it's not it's his kingdom. Stand that because you have an opposition. Okay. So anyway, a little technical difficulties here. However, but I have a large enough mouth. So like I said, expect because it comes with the package. Why? Because the devil peaks. And he wants to block it. Ability to take hold before the seed can be planted, before the outcome, the desired outcome can happen. I'm in the word. I'm in here. 
I may not be going line for line. We'll get there. But those of you who have the book, you have it. Those of you who are on Zoom, you have it. But I'm in here. Because the simple fact is, there was a purpose for existence at that time. And opposition came because the king favored him. And the king had a reason for favoring Daniel. Daniel had an excellent spirit. Daniel had an excellent spirit. And let me tell you, the scripture said it was found in him. That means somebody's looking. They would have just said he had an excellent spirit, but it was found. Ah, innocence was found. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I love the lesson. However, it says here, you, could you, it says, how could faithfulness lead to persecution and other problems? It leads there simply because the, 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 the favor of God's upon you and is known by the uh, opposing spirit. There's another question in section two that says, how could you develop more consistency in your personal spiritual habits? Habits is a word that the author chose to use, and there's nothing wrong with that word. But we don't want to make our habits be a ritual in that kind of sense of habit, because God don't like that. It, 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 it gets hollow. But we can have a lifestyle. I prefer lifestyle. But there's nothing wrong with the word habit. But there's something people do just because that's what they do. It's Sunday. Therefore, my habit is go to church. That, that's the wrong reason for coming. Oh, it's, uh, what, 5 o'clock. I wake up, I pray. Because that's my ritual. God doesn't, uh uh See, see, sacrifices he don't want. He rather obedience. See, David, not David here, but Daniel had an excellent spirit. God weighs the heart more than a habit. So the author used the word habit, but it's not wrong. But lifestyle, because it's coming from the place of the heart. So how you can be consistent in that love for God and that spiritual walk, spiritual commitment with God. That's what I prefer to use rather than spiritual habits. Okay. It says here in the sec in the third section, what are some ways God has given you favor with others? And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna open that up if anybody wanna share. Um ways that God has given you favor. I know some of the testimonies of some of these that are sitting here in the sanctuary. I can tell you some favor on that one. I can name some favor because I witnessed it. But if you will, anyone would like to share a way that God gave you favor with others, you know it was God. Yes, Evangelist Clark. You didn't like the popo? <laughs> A popo. Wow. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. From here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right. When it's time. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's him. Glory. That's it. Go. Holy fa oh, come on. Come on. That's it. Peace. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. That, that's it. Purpose. That's it. That's it. Now, come on, I know that feeling, I know that feeling. Jesus, I know that feeling.
Jesus. Here is God. Is God. Not was. Is. Now. That's right. Favor. Here's God. They kind of feel that. Knowing. All right, right now. Come on. That's right. All right, submissive. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it.
<laughs> All right. Go ahead. Bam. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Favor. Move with him. Mm -hmm. Why are you moving? But it needs to be while you're moving. For you. Trim. I'm hearing key words. Trimming you. Trim you. Pruning. All of it. All of it. Amen. 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 Now, since the lesson has been taught already in one test, I'm telling the truth in one, one testimony. Let me tell you how I come. Because our lesson connection says, is telling us about the Jewish history, how they've been through. They've been through since they were Jews. Why? They were God's chosen people. They're still God's chosen people. It is what it is. Favor ain't fair, as a lot of people say. He chose them. Down through the years, you want to know the history? Brother Troy can let you know history. He's our historian. He's our historian. Revelation's historian is Brother Troy. He has been officially nominated. He can tell you down through the years. It didn't just start with Hitler. You know, it's been down through the years. They've been warring. It didn't just start with Hamas. Down through the years. This is Bible on the news, people. They still don't like them. Why? They're God's chosen people. They have the favor of God. It is what it is. So what do we fit? We say, Lord, we thank you for being the grafted in branch. All right? Find your positive. Come on. Don't just get all hung up. Well, you know. You got to get grafted in so you can receive the blessings of Abraham by faith. Go to Sunday school and you'll find out how we have the same benefits of Abraham by faith. We are of the free woman, not the bonds woman, by faith. So we don't have to get mad because God chose some people. It is what it is. But he chose us Hey. So while this window of grace is open, we need to get it. Don't just get to work, get it and walk in it. Now, let me show you how Evangelist Clark testimony has taught the lesson. Instead of saying in number one, Daniel's success, Evangelist Clark's success. She made it. She got the job, but there was purpose along the way. She also, there was an excellent spirit found. See, when you read the lesson today, put your name there. I'm going to use Evangelist Clark's testimony, all right? I'm the teacher. I get to do that. So I'm going to use Evangelist Clark's testimony instead of Daniel's. We read about Paul, Peter, James, and John. Last, you are living a pistol. Red of men. Hallelujah, what chapter of your life you want to talk about? Because you got favor all through from cover to cover. Hallelujah, before you were born in your mother's womb. Hallelujah, God chose you. That's what he told Jeremiah. Hallelujah, for before you were born, there was an ordination. I chose you. I chose you before the ultrasound. Come on. I ordained you to be a prophet. Can ordination happen before the ultrasound? Before they even know you are going to be a boy or girl? 
Jeremiah had an ordination before the ultrasound. Come on. He was informed before. Because so their purpose. If I just clock, no, you don't need that job. It sounds good. But there's purpose. All things work together. They're employed. They're working strategically together for the good to those who love God and who are the call, mm, selective few. The call don't just mean people who are called because all of us are called to repentance. But the call have been chosen. Ha, how my shot. The, the, the call got a purpose, a specific purpose for the kingdom, for the glory of God. So guess what? There will be success. But you got to move as God strategically tells you to move. When she sat, got the first news, I'm sorry, I really want to hire you, my God. It's not, I, I wish this policy wasn't in place because I could clearly see it was DOJ, not you. And it, I, I want to hire you. She sat there and cried. But she prayed. Ah, still standing. Standing tall on her knees. She might have been sitting, but in your heart, you can be on your knees. Lord, you got to move me from this place. Trusting. Trusting. That's in the lesson. Trusting. I think that's there. God's favor. Let me go back to our outline. I can find it quick. Trusting. We're down here where it says, I will trust God to deliver me from my trial. She's in the lesson. So therefore, he told her, just do it. See, there is a submission. I'm just going to obey. Daniel didn't argue with no decree. He and the king were friends. Darius loved Daniel. But see, here's the thing. The king got to watch who get in his ear. Okay, let me just go ahead and say that. Bring it home. Pastors, leaders, you got to watch who's in your ear. Uh-huh, because everybody come and say, Pastor, I got your back. They not for you necessarily, let me tell the truth. You got to stay before God, leaders. You got to, because everything, you got to guard that ear gate. They study the policy too. They start to study protocol too. But when the call get in the way, you know, the protocol, when the protocol get in the way of the call, there's a problem. Protocol has its place. All respect to protocol. But never let protocol get in the way of the call. And it does. I've seen it. So pastors, guard your ears. Hear from God. Because these people who were in Daniel's circle, the presidents, those people who saw that the king favored Daniel. Mm -hmm. We can't get nothing on him because he has an excellent spirit. We can't get nothing on him because he ain't doing nothing wrong. He, don't be, he ain't cussing us out. He ain't hurting us. He's not messing with us. We got to get something. On. Have you seen people struggle to find something on you and it doesn't work? Have you seen it? So they said, what can we do? The only way we can get him is go against how the king just, just manipulate. Let me call it what it is. Manipulate the king. Because the king's word cannot be revoked. His word cannot be changed. He himself can't change his own decree. If the natural king cannot reverse his word, what about the king of kings? He said, who was that? Barack said, I can't curse these people because God has blessed. I can't curse what God has blessed. I, they're, they're blessed. You can't curse them. So if God says, I'm going to bless you, and he being king of kings, Lord of lords, if his word cannot be reversed, I mean, we need to be grateful for that. Because this king was a natural king, and he himself could not. Even in the book of Esther, the king had to the only way they can change something is put an amendment. Because if the king puts a decree there, it must be carried out. His signet. 
got to be carried out. Even if he said, oops, I goof. I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. It fell on listening ears. One day I was praying. I told the Lord, Lord, your word fell on listening ears. I got that from Sister Hunter. It fell on listening ears. Because your word went out, it cannot come back to you void. It fell on my listening ears. So give him back his word because he's the king. His word is his decree. And if the natural king couldn't change it, God definitely can change his word. So we got something to praise God for because his word is for our good, not our demise. But these people manipulate the king because, see, if the king was so proud and, and all in his self, he might have caught that because he knew his friend Daniel prayed. But you're not thinking, King. You're not up on it. You know Daniel. He's your buddy. You know how he pray. But they come and say, okay, King, here's how you know if everybody like you. Anybody praying to another God within 30 days, let them be thrown into. Oh, oh you felt that because you felt that in your flesh. Your flesh like that. Glory, King. So you bit it. But they knew you too. See, people study people. Oh, I know how to get him. I've watched what he likes. The devil know how to put what you like on your plate and feed it if you're not careful. So they presented him this for his pride. He bit it. Uh-huh. And he hurt his own buddy. But because an excellent spirit was found in Daniel, God still delivered him. I'm still in the lesson. The persecution came because of the favor. Uh-huh. That's the second chapter. See, there was faithfulness to obedience. When the Lord told Evangelist Clark, just obey, submit. No, she ain't nice. No, she ain't doing what she's supposed to. No, she got purpose. She got a little plain, a little nasty, thanky attitude. She got a little something going on. Just obey. Just obey. Because see, what people don't realize, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. It's still in the word. Yes. Obedience. He did not specify. So guess what? Don't be touching. See, we got to take him at his word. Because he's the king. It can't change. Don't touch with your mouth. Don't touch with your hand. Don't touch. Somebody, and I'm, okay, I see your hand. Somebody has just flat out lied on me. I don't know why they want to do that. They, they know me. <laughs> they, they just lied on me. It, 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 it made them, I guess, sometimes people, they're not hating you. They just want that attention by the group. They're lying too. So they lie on you because they got their attention. So they like you, but they just want that right there. So they give them a lie because they know they like it. Because people study people. So they use you. They sacrifice you to get their attention. I've had that happen. This person that lied on me for this group. Like, what you know me? Why you do that? Okay. However, I said, you better stop it or you're going to fall flat on your face. Billy, Lady P, no. Because I don't care how you don't like me or do like me. I'm a child of God. I know when to put my sword out, okay? Don't play. You don't have to like me, but you will respect me. Because God will let you know, oh, touch the wrong one. I dare say you're going to fall flat on your face. face. But guess what? God respected the word of his prophet. When, when who the prophet said, don't let it rain. God backed that word. Because he had a relationship with him. Well, we got to watch what we say when we do have favor. Because I said, you're going to fall on your face. Oh, you, somebody had a hand. I'm sorry. Let me just let you know. They fell on their face. They busted up their lip where they lied through. Their face was a mess. And then the Lord had me to go pray for their face. <laughs> I went to lay hands. I wasn't going to put my hands on the, the crusty lip. I was just going to touch the side. As soon as I reached, they went, because they were in pain. <laughs> the, the whole face was hurting. So I said, I'm not going to, don't worry, don't worry. You just touch right here. 
and I prayed. I know my mouth was like, I know what I said. Watch what you say when you're the one with God's favor. He will back you. He's sitting here li listening to it all. He'll back you. He'll back your word. Go ahead, Evangelist Clark. The word. The word did die. Mm -hmm. What you do to the least of him, you've done it unto him. So just be nice to everybody. How about that? That's just safe, y'all. That's just safe. You don't know who's his least. Pastor, and then you, uh, Lady P. Praise the Lord. Enjoy. And that's exactly it. I mean, his word will not return to him void. And if his word comes through the prophets, his word comes through whoever his word comes through, it's going to do what it's intended to do. Whether the person is alive or the person has passed on, the word is yet the word. We read in the word now. I mean, right now. Lesson. The word is, so the word is going to carry on because it was God's word. He gave it to the prophet. He gave it to whoever he gave it to. So, and, so, and the integrity of the word, it's, it's going to maintain. Maintain. So, so, yeah, so the word. And also I thought about, if you remember, for as this was uh, Elijah when he turned around, he pat when Elijah he had he had, he had um, died. he died mm -hmm. and somebody what fell on him. Bones. What happened? Because the person because the anointing came even though he was dead. He was dead. <laughs> but the anointing was still on him. Glory yeah. to God. On the bones. Now oh, here the, the bones. man was buried. Uh, yeah, buried. Uh -huh. He touched his bones, touched Elijah's bone, and he was revived. That's it. Come on. That's now. it. That's it. Don't so, play. So you're talking about you know. Look, <laughs> when, when, what God, it, when He ordains, come on, it's ordained. Yes, well, that, that means life, death. When He ordains it, it's ordained. Who and, is and, and you don't want to put your mouth on God's word. You know, if He said it, <laughs> Lord, it's His word, right. regardless of where it come from. What He did, it's ordained by God, and it shows when that man died. All of a sudden, that, that man felt. He, now it's like I uh, bet I would be running out of it. <laughs> So you it know? shows that what God does is well done, and when He does something, it's 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 ordained by God, and you cannot reverse it. We said it earlier. You said it earlier. Yeah. You can't reverse what God. We say can't curse what God has blessed. That's right. The natural king couldn't do it. Good. So imagine the the spiritual king, and you know, just think about people with double graves. You know, people paying for double graves. Okay, think about that. Ah, that man just touched his body, his his coffin, touched the bones of Elijah, and he got he revived. Now, what do you think happened with the procession? My God, my God. We are talking about the same God as the four times. And this lesson goes talking about Daniel. I plugged in Evangelist Clark's name. Okay? Because, see, we're all living epistles read them in. You can plug in your name. So, guess what? Evangelist Clark has some persecution. She has some undercover opposition. Lady P. To the bone. To the bone.
Come on. You saw that face, I know. Come on. Maneuver, yes, yes, submit, yes. Amen, that's it. The, the call. That's it. Like, in, in, in in the in the lesson of Evangelist Clark, because we plugged in her name versus Daniel right here, right? She that woman was a little perturbed because she knew some stuff. Some people feel a little intimidated because you they they rather work with ignorant people because then they feel up. I rather you down than I feel up because if you're down, you make me feel better. But if you got sense, I might not really want to deal with you. That's how some people are. They feel a little intimidated because you know something. They rather work with ignorant people and not in a bad way, just people that just don't know. Because some people like a controlling spirit. You know, they have that. So, right. So here, but when the law says just, just obey, just do it. I looked at how they uh, tried to set Daniel up. It's like a forced fire. Forced fire. I've been on a job where somebody tried to force fire me. Don't have a reason. We want to set it up where I can't complete the work or I can't get to that location or that force fire. Oh, you know, I work at another job. Why are you giving me these hours? Because I want you to be late so I can fire you. I want you force fire. Okay, Daniel, I know you're going to pray. So I want you force fired. I want the kings to have to follow his decree and put you in the prison with the uh, uh in the in the den of lions now moving forward and we're still in the lesson daniel's response i'd rather obey god that's just the bottom line to uh page 69 letter b i'd rather obey god see we talked about the faithful obedience bringing god's blessings in evangelist clark's testimony she had to be submissive she had to be faithful I don't see, I don't understand, but I'm going to submit. And you're going to maneuver me. I'm going to move with the spirit of God. Ordered steps. The wise man's steps are ordered by what? A good man. Steps are ordered by the Lord. So here now, we over here on page 69. Daniel's response, you can just, just, just uh, uh, sum it up to, I'd rather obey God. I'm going to do what I know works. I'm going to pray as a four time with my windows open, knowing the writing dead in your eye. So guess what? Because that was the reason they knew he would. Okay. Let the king know. Okay. So they put him in the den of lions. Now we all can admit we have been in a den of lions, not literal animals, but you've been around lion people. And God has shut them out. The 
you know, one time I asked Bishop, he had us at the Sizzler. We were eat, uh, young people at the Sizzler eating. And Bishop Tyler asked us how many lions was in, in the uh, den of li the lion's den. We were eating and searching, 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 searching the scriptures. Here are young people, y'all, at the Sizzler, at the table with our Bibles, trying to be the first one to get that number. And I was just tired. I got up and went over to pastor's table where he was around the other ministers. I went over there. It ain't no number. And Bishop Tyler looked up at me and said, good. You found out there was no number of lions mentioned. You just know there are more than one because he had an S on the end of the word. So I said, well, why you had us looking for it then? He said, what did you learn while you were looking for it? What did you learn on the way? And we learned a whole lot while we were searching for the number of lions in the lion's den. First of all, it wasn't called a lion's den. It was a den of lions, which made a difference. You know, Bishop Tyler, was, he, he taught us well with, with that kind of stuff. And then he said, there's no number mentioned, but you have to search the scriptures. Yeah. And we were all eating at the table at the Siddler. All in our Bibles, young people enjoying the word. What happened to that kind of stuff? What happened to the appetite? Because that made us get in the word. What happened? It's, you said it stopped. But he, he made a way for us to want to go to the word. Wisdom. We've been reading uh, Proverbs this month. Wisdom. Daniel, uh, uh, in the third part, Daniel deliverance. I mean, I circled that word, uh, how King Darius felt sorry for Daniel, realizing he had been bamboozled. How many leaders have been bamboozled? It is what it is. Hmm? What? Go ahead. Well, the, this Arthur says, even King Darius felt sorry for Daniel, you know, after he threw him in the lion's deal, then realizing he had been bamboozled. He'd been duped. He was. <laughs> yeah, but it, listen, they probably used the word bamboozled because it wasn't a science. They didn't put a gun to his head. You know what I'm saying? Daniel is your friend. You knew Daniel. You know that you knew Daniel's lifestyle. You knew what prayer meant to Daniel. You knew about Daniel's God because you knew what Daniel did before you became king. You knew how he helped King Nebuchadnezzar. See, see Daniel's work went before him. There was a testimony already in the atmosphere regarding Daniel before Darius got on the throne. Because he had already went through what? Um, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, that king. Belshadar, that one. Okay. Now we hear Darius. I think Cyrus was probably after him, but here's Darius here now. Okay. So the bottom line is there was a testimony about his life. So this king had heard of him. That's why he was in the palace. He was chosen. You don't hear about the Hebrew boys with him at this point. That's what Arthur is saying. His friends couldn't even help him out with this. Nobody could help Daniel. He was in a place where nobody could help him but God. And moving right along, getting ready to wrap it up, the king had respect for Daniel. God delivered him. And, and nobody could deliver Daniel like that on that wise, in that style. Therefore, the king himself, like the other king who said, didn't we throw in three, but I see four? Here come another king. Got to still give that same God glory as a four time. See, I, you hear a four time? Nebuchadnezzar had, to, Nebuchadnezzar had to say it. That fourth man looked like the son of God. That Belshadar had to just go on and give Daniel the jury and the reward because He's out of here. I'm just going, hey, if you can read, okay, bye. You're going. Now here's Daniel with Darius. Darius already know. 
I heard about you with the other king. I ain't messing with you. You mock me. I need you near me. So the presidents, the other ones, they knew that Darius should have already had their relationship enough to know what Daniel does. So King wasn't up on it. He wasn't up on his game. He wasn't guarding his ear gate. He went in and he was bamboozled. But all things work together because out of a negative thing come a positive thing. Out of a situation that looks bad, just like Joseph, his brothers meant it for evil, but God made it good to save many lives. So all things work together. So when Daniel was thrown in the den of lions, guess what? The king had to declare, y'all better respect the God of Daniel. He had to watch his life. So instead of Daniel, you put your name there. Can anybody see an excellent spirit in you? When you're going through, do you still stand tall on your knees? Even if your knees is down on the inside, you can be walking and you're on your knees in your spirit. Do you still maintain your integrity? Do you realize that when the king gives a decree, it can be diverse. And a decree has been placed on our lives. Blessings. My well, bless you going out and bless you coming in. That's a decree. So it can be reversed. So while we go through favor, as Evangelist Clark said, it's not pretty. It's not always happy. But can you move with it? Can, can you trust it? right mm -hmm. it's so prevalent yes that's right Differently. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. See a head. Yes. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. It's a pillar. It's a pillar. It's it's holding you. Yes. Yes. That's a lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. That's why I only took one because this is living the pistol of Diane Clark. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Hot Shabbat. Hallelujah. Favor. Favor. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey, it's worth the praise if you know the favor of God is upon you. It doesn't de it doesn't depict on what you're going through. That's not the that's not the evidence. That's not the criteria. Do you know the favors of God? The favor of God is upon you. Hallelujah! Go ahead and praise Him. I'm on Shanda. I don't care about the situation. I know I'm favored. Hey, glory, highly favored. Halabo Chanda. When people be, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Do you know what you're saying? Do you realize I'm blessed and highly favored? All these problems is telling me I'm highly favored. Haters telling me I'm highly favored. I said, haters tell me I'm highly favored. Shanda Labo Shanda. What does favor look like? 
Turn down all about Satan. Mary, blessed are thou, thou art highly favored. And you got to have your baby in a stable. Shama, Joseph, the favor of the Lord is upon you. And you got lied on in Potiphar's house. Had to go to a prison. Yeah, but he had to get to the prison, Joseph. You have to be the best cup bearer. Talk to Bashanda. When you tell him the interpretation of the dream, the baker was going to see, hey, he's on it. Let me tell him mine. Testimonies in the prison. I got a Bashanda. But when the cup bearer got it, wait for me when you get back to the palace. When you in your situations, look for the baker, but don't forget to look for the cup bearer. There'll be two. Look again. Hey, hey, I'm all In the prison. The lady got you in the ears. In the prison. Somebody lied. I'm talking to you that's been lied on today. Hold on, I'm all When you're in the prison, don't get a bad attitude. I'm talking to myself, y'all. Look for the baker, but don't forget to look for the cup there because he the one going to speak on your behalf. I looked at Naaman. Who was that? Um, when Naaman was healed of leprosy, it was his sidekick, Gehazi, okay? Went behind his back and did a little something, something. Okay. Here, Gehazi ended up with leprosy. But later on in the next chapter, the other chapter, you see Gehazi talking to the king on uh, 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 Elisha's behalf. I said, what you doing in the palace talking and you had leprosy? But the king asked him, tell me about Elisha. Tell me about the woman, daddy. Here she comes the woman. My point when I'm saying is God strategically placed people in your path for you at a certain time. When it's time, you will know. You will understand it better by and by. And I'm a close. Yes, Evangelist Clark. Right. He said, don't hurt yourself. Don't. Yeah, we can walk up out of here. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Proof. Infallible proofs. You know what? When, you remember when Paul and Silas was in prison, I'm going to close, they were put in the inner prison. What? I mean, you got your prison. Let me just, let, let's go to the tabernacle. You got your court, your outer court, and your inner court. They were bound in the inner. So that prison became a tabernacle. See, you, 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 the tabernacle's gonna go with you. When you find your place in the inner, in the heart of it, praise and worship. Pray and worship. Paul, one pray, the other one sang. Don't forget to praise God. Don't forget to worship because that prison will become a tabernacle and you're in the inner place and everybody's bands were loose ah but somebody went a little farther than loose bands and received salvation he and his house that was the guard ah and then you can stand up with attitude when they want to sneak them out of prison paul said no y'all put us in here in front of everybody you come get us out in front of everybody you know them Nicodemuses try to come and apologize to you on the side, on the slick and slide, because they don't want everybody to know that they did you wrong. But these men that threw that Daniel in, that, 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 that manipulated the king to get Daniel thrown in, guess what? God uncovered that thing because the 
the lions that were starving, they were famished. They didn't have dinner with Daniel. They were still hungry because God had shut their mouths. Their mouths came open to eat when God allowed the ones that persecuted him to be thrown in in this place. And they had a nice meal. Instead, they had, instead of one meal, one Daniel, they had three, y'all. They had a, a combo. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to close with that. So be kind to everybody. Treat everybody right. From his greatest to his least. That's not his anointing and do his prophet no harm. Because, honey, you don't know who got God's favor. I do know one thing. We here have the favor of God on us. Let's be blessed and recognize it. Yes. Hmm? It goes with it. That's favor. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Repentance is a question. Let me tell you, repentance is favor anyway. It's a grant. If you got to be exposed, if you got to be humbled to get to the place of a broken heart and contrite spirit, that's a blessing from the Lord because Esau sought bitterly for a place, for space for repentance and didn't find it. So if somebody gets so crushed and they say, oh God, I'm sorry, I messed up. I'm exposed. I'm, let me just repent. And you really mean it? That's favor. That's love of God to give you space to repent. And guess what? Like the prodigal son, there's a ring waiting on you. It's pride. Pride messes people up. Did it, Lord. I messed up, God, and I'm sorry. I won't do you won't have problems out of me about this no more because I'm sorry. Cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. We do forget. That's why we have the word of God to remind us. Yes, we read about Daniel, but we got to bring it home. We got to bring it to us today because we are living epistles. Sure mercies. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to thy love and kindness. Then have mercy. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only. Mm -hmm. You're not here. And would he have repented if he stayed covered? Yes. Yeah. See, 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 nowadays, see, nowadays people don't want to do the uncovering, but some people won't repent unless it's uncovered. David repented because he heard Nathan came and told him what uh, he gave him a parable and David had a good heart. We do stuff. But, we, but, but with a good heart, once David heard that scenario, oh, no, I don't like that. That was wrong. Uh-uh. That, no, that man will die. Well, guess what? Nathan said, thou art the man. Let me bring it to you. And his heart, God weighs the heart. Man look on the outward appearance. God weighs that heart. David was really sorry. When you're really sorry, God ain't going to have no problems with you out of that. You might have to repent for something else. But not that, because you meant that thing. Lord, I'm sorry. God know that heart. He will restore. So let me give you hope today. We're under grace. We're not under the law. Thank God for the grace of God that will refer, allow forgiveness and restoration. But we don't play with the window of grace. We don't frustrate the grace of God by repeating and repeating and think it's going to be all right. No, you'll be in that land, uh, uh, den of lions too. And the lines will be fat and full and happy. Okay, I'm trying to turn it back. You about to say something? I'm going to turn it back over in the, in the hands of the pastor. Lion or lion? <laughs> Which den am I talking about? Everybody been in a lion. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. A den of lions. All right. I hear Pastor Tyler's, uh, you know, his corrections. Oh, Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed the lesson there. Standing tall on his knees. Glory to God. And allow us to be able to see as Daniel, as he, as he, and he was, you know, no matter how, he's standing tall, but he was, it was because he was on his knees. He, he constantly prayed, regardless of whatever what was going on. Glory to God. Whether he was in, had the favor, he yet was on his knees. Allow them to be able to see that and when we stay on our knees at the same time, that helps us to what? Stand tall. Glory to God. Beautiful lesson, beautiful. And I love it for us, all the uh, evangelists and the, you know, everyone, the testimony, everything that was being, being said. Thank God for, for this lesson. He could have kept on going. <laughs> beautiful lesson. Standing tall on your knees. At this time, we get ready to dismiss, but we thank God for each and everyone that was with us this morning us on the different medias. But thank God for allowing us to be here this morning. At this time, we're going to stand and be dismissed if there's nothing else. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.